I'm Neil McKenzie and this is Born to Ride, the show that follows biking hopefuls competing to be the best in their chosen motorsport. On this week's show, we meet the Jones family taking part in the Regency Enduro on Western Supermare Beach. Beach race is something totally different to any other form of off-road motorcycle race we do. With Rowan, I think he could possibly, if things went well, he could finish in the top 10. Uh, I would certainly expect him to finish in the top 20. But there again, if he has problems, he may not finish at all. Um, it's a very well-known race throughout the world, you know. A lot of people have heard of the Western Beach Race. It's just something to get your name on, really, so that you can say to people, you know, I did it. Whether you do two laps or you do 22 laps, whether you finish first or whether you finish last, it's just something that you can say, I've done it, I had a go. Our racer this week is Rowan Jones. This Welsh enduro racer is a fully qualified ACU national coach at the Yamaha Off-Road Experience led by his father, Geraint Jones. In his short career, Rowan's achievements include two silver and one gold ISDE medals and a fourth in the 1999 World Junior Championship. He is about to take part in his third Western Beach Regency Enduro and is hoping for a top 10 finish. It's very difficult to predict exact finishing positions, but I would imagine, I'd hope somewhere inside the top 10 Top five would be very nice. It will depend quite a lot on if top guys have problems, who has problems, what problems we have. You know, he rides well, all the boys ride well. I mean, in sport to win, and if you don't win, no one remembers second place at the end of the day. The beach race is, is a bit of a lottery, to be honest. You know, you're talking 1,000 competitors or something like that, an awful lot of bikes on a small, confined course. That's um, a gold medal from the ISD, which is known as International Six Days Enduro, which is um, World Team Championships in France in 2001. That's a gold medal, the only gold I've won. I think I've ridden in four, six days and come away with three silvers and one gold. So it's my one of my proudest, proudest possessions. The legendary Regency Enduro race is in its 20th year. It covers a four mile course with jumps created out of sand and has attracted more than 800 riders this year. It includes quads, sidecar and solo bike races. A separate event for sidecars and quads was introduced in 2000. Up until 1999, they raced alongside the two wheeled machines. With some dunes up to 30 foot high, the course has been designed to provide the toughest test ever. Riders require stamina, determination and a reliable bike that can last the pace for three gruelling hours. On the Sunday we'll have just over 800 entrants. All start at 12 o'clock when mass start as many laps as you can do in three hours. If you can survive, if the bike survives, it's just survival of the fittest, realistically. Beach race is something totally different to any other form of off-road motorcycle race we do during the year, really. It's a little bit of a cross between motocross, which is circuit racing, which round and round a, a small man-made circuit, which may be two minutes in length, and enduro, which is a much longer form of um, off-road motorcycling where you're doing, covering large distances. Rowan Jones lives with his family in Mid Wales. He's a coach at the Yamaha Off-Road Experience, which is based on the farm where they live. Rowan's father, Geraint, is one of the most respected figures within Enduro. He has been ten times British Enduro champion and eight times international six days Enduro gold medalist. Geraint has been a big influence in Rowan's choice of career. I came into the sport because due to my father's interest in um, off-road motorcycling. He was ten times British Enduro champion between 1979 and... 1990-ish, something like that, quite a long period. I had a bike just to play around the farm at home here when I was about six, yeah, six I think. But I never really, wasn't encouraged and never raced until I was 16, primarily because one dad was racing week in, week out, so I didn't have the time. And secondly, it was, I thought it was very important not to push me into it, it my decision, and I just rode for fun around the farm, having a lot of fun and playing, but never had the seriousness and the, the stress of having to race. You have enough of that when you come to racing at a high level later years. I've got to be honest and say that I've never pushed them. It's entirely up to them, you know, they do what they want to do and if they decided tomorrow they don't want to race anymore, it wouldn't particularly bother me. But if they want to ride, I, you know, I will help them. I suppose with following my father, it's um, a lot, lot to live up to really and everybody, you, you turn to be known a little bit as Garrett Jones' son, not in your, in your own right and you maybe feel like you should go and try another sport so you, you, you're there in your own right maybe. Rowan is getting his bike ready for the beach race. Right at the moment I'm splitting the chain, I'm taking the chain, breaking the chain to take the chain off. This chain's done sort of um, cool. six days work at the ISD in Czech Republic now, fortnight ago, three weeks ago. 
So it needs replacing anyway. Take the chain off. Um, replace both front and back sprockets with new sprockets, plus possibly a different size back sprocket with a different number of teeth on for the, as I was talking about before, the gearing and things. Always when at the b you should be using what they call an O-ring chain, which is a more durable chain. And again, this is an al aluminium or an alloy back sprocket. We'll put steel on because what would happen is it would wear totally and these teeth would start snapping off. That's something as severe as the beach with all the sand and the water about. It's very, very abrasive. So. I'm changing the, the rear sprocket for a steel item and possibly for one with a different number of teeth on to change the, the gearing for the top speed on the straight, that sort of thing. For this race, my brother's been very good. I and mean, sometimes I've got the lads could help, but um, local lads are a little interested in motorcycling. But it's very difficult to justify to afford to pay a mechanic. Sometimes when we're very, very busy, we have to sort of wind us a little bit. But with this race, my brother being injured, he's been very good. He's been doing quite a lot of the work on the bike, which means you've got more time to do other stuff, preparation, training, that sort of thing. What is it about enduro racing? With enduros, we're quite lucky. You get out and you see the countryside. It's and just get away from the stresses and the strains of work and everyday sort of hassles which you have in life and you forget it all and it's exhilarating, there's a lot of speed involved it keeps you fit and healthy because it's, it's a physical sport and for me it's given me the opportunity to sort of see a lot of the world which I wouldn't have had otherwise The beach race is something special, it's just, it's it's, very, it's, it's manic, it's, it's, it's very mad um, it's almost dangerous, you think well maybe should you be there because there's a very good chance of getting hurt but it has that sort of buzz and it's that sort of atmosphere which makes you want to be there and makes you go back year after year. Some years you think, well, after last year I thought, well, am I bother, going to bother going back again? But here we are, we're back again this year. Rowan's cousins are also taking part in the Regency Enduro. There seems to be some family rivalry between the lads. We're always competing and one wants to beat the other and it's comparing times, comparing positions and having little wages that we've all got a bit because this is a special one off at the end of the year, we've all got a little bit of a wager going on here when it takes it all, so it's... It's, um, it's good, it pushes you on, gives you gives something to train with, something to practice with, gives a lot of wash it, but very, very good. Saturday of the race weekend and the Western Beach is buzzing. The quad and sidecar races are underway. Rowan and his cousin Edward are wandering around the paddock and checking out the track. We're here just um, watching the quad race in preparation for the, the main solar race on um, or tomorrow. So just milling about preparing, ready for the ready for the big day really, just taking in the atmosphere. And this is um, my cousin Edward, sort of one of the country's top riders, finished ninth last year in, um, in the beach race. Uh, it all seems good. We've just been, like Rowan said, we've been concentrating on the, the course, looking for how the quads manage the track because it's quite important because the, they build sand dunes up with uh, diggers and you, you can lose minutes in there if you don't get a good start, so we're learning a bit. The Regency Enduro is not only about the riders, the spectators help make it the Enduro event of the year. Western Beach Race realistically is a big party, end of year party where you can come if you race every week you can come and have a blast if you just want to do a one-off event. This is what everybody wants to do. It's just end of October, big party in the town, big race on the Sunday. We come down to watch all the races and all that, the quads, the bikes. Uh, we live in Clevedon, we don't live far, so it's just, just a nice trip down. They're a bit crazy, but you know, you've got to do these things to have a bit of life, you know, go for it. Great, it's my first time. Um, I think it's smashing and, and I'm amazed at all the different ages um, from little tots. And I, I love to see the kids on the bikes and the parents encouraging that sort of thing and doing something with them. The task of transforming Western Beach for the race is the responsibility of Phil Roberts. I'm in charge of the construction of the course and the deconstruction of the course. It um, takes a period of four to five days from the start to the finish and three days to clear up after the event, like, you know. That includes, like, stripping the fences down, cleaning the fences off, levelling the sand back to the levels that we started with originally, like. Around 40 sand obstacles are constructed along the winding four-mile course. This requires taking a lot of machinery to the western beach to get the job done in a short time scale. Several thousands of tons of sand have to be moved around the beach, not once, but twice for the two races. 
The course on the solar race must be identical to the quad and sidecar race. We just scrape it up off the beach because throughout the summer months the sand comes in from the sea and it builds up and builds up and we just use the surplus sand that's come in. Well, on the deconstruction of the, of the course, we de transport the sand from this end of the beach to the other end of the beach, which is washed away throughout the, the summer season and winter season as well. Like. Sunday morning at Weston Beach and all is not quiet on the front. The gale force winds have brought the proceedings to a standstill. The emergency services and organisers decided it would be too risky to let the race go ahead. So all the racers have to pick up their bikes and many leave disappointed. It's time for a break. Stay tuned as coming up in part two is this. We'll be back after the break. Welcome back to Born to Ride with me, Neil McKenzie. This week we're in Western Supermare for the annual Regency Enduro. Saturday's quad and sidecar race took place unhindered, but Sunday's Regency Solo Enduro was a casualty of the windy weather and had to be cancelled, leaving more than 900 riders and 30,000 plus spectators disappointed. However, the organisers are now rerunning the event the week after. For the last 20 years, the motorbike beach race, one of the biggest biking events in the UK calendar, has attracted bikers and motorcycle enthusiasts en masse to the seaside. Entrants travel from all over the world to take part and try out the endurance course. Rowan Jones is entering the solo event of the Regency Enduro. His family is helping out in the pits. Right, we have um, here on the phone, my younger brother, who's usually riding as part of the team, probably chief in the pits today, out with a broken shoulder. Um, then Robert, who's riding, with the body out there. Um, and then the guy we saw before, Edward, who's kitted up, he's also riding. He's, he was ninth for last year, so he'll be looking for a top five if possible. Um, Jason in the pits with us. Also, my dad, my uncle, which is not about there, getting stuff ready down the pits and things. We just got to get kitted now, get everything sorted, kitted up and ready to go, and then get down the start line by about 11.30, ready for a briefing, and to be able to get your bikes early to get on the line to get a good position, really, for the start. Because the start's fairly crucial, being that first June in the first 50, not in the melee of the pack and queuing and waiting and maybe losing a lap on the, on the leaders. Rowan gets his kit on and prepares for the race. It's important that man as well as machine have the correct preparation for an event like Weston. If you ask anyone what they love about the beach race, the overwhelming answer will be the start. Best bit of the race is the start. If you ask anyone what they come to see, it's the start. No one can believe you've got 800 bikes going down a mile and a half straight. The noise is incredible. All the riders go to the paddock to pick up their bikes, then have to run to the start line. Eight hundred riders line up along the beach. Flaxon goes and they're off. For the serious riders, a good start is important. You need to get to the first corner as quickly as possible so as to avoid the pile-up. The start is very, very important. If you get a good start and you can get down to the first dune in the first 10 or maybe first 20, you stand a much better chance than if you get a bad start and you're down there and there's three, four hundred riders in front of you. Try and get out the start and get to the, to the first corner within the first 50, hopefully. The problem is on something like a 254 stroke, it's, very, it's a small underpowered bike, really. So you're not going to get there in the first 10, there's going to be guys on big 500, 600 four strokes that are going to be maybe not even competitive in the race, but are going to be there well before us. But if you're there out of the top 50, as I was last year, I had a bad start, you come there and the first dune is full, there's 100 bikes there already, you're in a queue, you're not going anywhere. By the time you get over that dune, if you haven't damaged your bike, the guys that have got the start and got over the first dunes are coming back around to lap you within in a lap, so you're sort of 
this is back straight away. Rowan's pit crew are keeping an eye on his progress. They need to make sure he's got enough fuel and let him know when to come in for his first pit stop. Pitting probably on every hour due, for, due to sort of the, the size of the amount of fuel we're carrying on, 8 litre tank. Um, clean gloves, clean goggles, quick drink. As we come in, they'll have a pressure washer ready to wash the radiators out because of um, problems with overheating, sand getting in around the rad fins and things. Dylan puts the board out to signal to Rowan that he should come in for fuel next. It's very difficult to tell uh, what positions they're in at the moment because everyone's mixed up. They're on different laps, but I think most of the boys are running in the top 100 at the moment, so someone here. <laughs> Edward Jones comes in for fuel, a quick stop and he's back out on the track. The race continues and as time goes by more riders get stuck in the sand rots. Robert Jones, Rowan's cousin, comes in for a pit stop. Rowan will be in now within sort of 10 minutes, quarter of an hour. He's, he's running top 12 now, so he's pulling up all the time. So we should have him in with about two hours gone. And, one, and then he will, that'll be his last stop. He'll go right to the finish then. He had a poor start. He was probably only just inside the top 200 off the start. But since then, he's been circulating quite good and putting in some good lap times. And now he's, he's running 12. Another of the Jones clan comes in for refueling. <laughs> Many riders are not out to win the race. Just finishing is an accomplishment in itself. Just do it, it's great fun. Not even just to be a winner, just to take part, it's superb. Well, I came up last year and saw it, and then decided to have a go this year. You know, I like riding off-road, and I thought, well, it's different, so I'll have a go. The winner will do in excess of 22, 23 laps, but the average lap is probably 12 to 15. Once the three hours are up, racers start coming back to the pits. finishes the race and is quick to get out of his sandy gear. Hey Rods, I passed you on the first corner and then some bloke hit me, did you see me go down? <laughs> some bloke was going to stop, straight at the inside, Tivo, we're going to be in the fence. No front brake all race. Broke the hose, first lap. <laughs> David Knight won the rescheduled solo Regency Western Beach race with 27 laps and won the quad race the previous weekend. Last time I won was 99. I've been winning every year since and then had a mechanical problem and been out of the race so it's quite a bit of a lottery down here just to 
you know, finished, so had the back brake go end of the first lap, the second lap, that went completely, so I thought, not again, it's going to be non-finish again, but I just cracked on and I thought, because I won the quad race last weekend down here, um, I just, I thought I'm not giving up now, I just keep going to the end and after about an hour and a half, the track was real rough, so it was a lot easier with no brakes, and you use the corners, the ruts to slow down, so really happy. Rowan reflects on the day's events. Um, yeah, not bad. Not well, not bad after the first lap. I had a, 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 a fairly major problem on the first lap, or the first corner actually. I got a good start, got up the straight fairly well. I'd say got into the first corner in top 30, top 50. I started to turn the first corner and somebody decided he wasn't going to bother turning it. He came straight on, the middle side of me. And t he took me down, put me in the fence. Once I got going and got through, just sort of kept out of trouble for the first lap or two, tried to fight myself through the queues and pick my way through. And then really just got into a rhythm and kept going, kept going, and then pushing harder and harder as the race went on. And I could see then from the pit board that we were coming from like early on being top 80, top 50, down to maybe top 30 in the middle of the race. We came to the last field and we were top 20. And then in the end we were 12th and 13th. So yeah, pretty happy with 12th and 13th at the end of the day. But um, I think it could have been better if we had a better start and a more trouble-free first lap. But it's, that's Western, these things happen. If you fancy having a go at beach racing, then check out our website, menandmotors.co.uk. You'll find information on how to get into the sport. Thanks for joining me, Neil McKenzie, on Born to Ride, the ultimate guide to the world of motorcycle sport.